So you'd like to buy your first NFT and possibly play some crypto games to earn some extra income. But you don't want to lose any money and ideally you'd like some customer support if you make a mistake. Well, in episode 4 of my series on crypto wallets, I'm going to share why Metamask is the ideal solution and also run through any concerns over your personal data and privacy and look at the recent announcement of the integration of Metamask with PayPal, making this an indispensable tool in crypto. If that sounds interesting to you, let's dig in and get at it. So the next exciting feature in the Metamask ecosystem is non-fungible tokens. And I'm going to do a demo showing how to buy an NFT on the well-known platform OpenSea. So if we go to the OpenSea homepage, the first step is to connect our MetaMask wallet like before. So head to the profile button, click here and select to connect your MetaMask. Just let it load and there you go. We're now connected and we can browse the library of NFTs. And if we want to buy one, it will charge our MetaMask wallet. So head back to the home page. And if you click on this explore button, you can search all the different types of NFTs. So I've started having a look through and I've chosen one which looks interesting, which isn't too expensive. I can buy for the purposes of this demo, which is just down here. And it looks kind of like those Bored Ape Yacht Club um, <laughs> images. So if you click on that, it will open up the NFT and show you all the information about it. So to buy this NFT, you'll notice that it's priced in MATIC, which are the tokens on the Polygon network. So before purchasing, go to MetaMask and switch from the Ethereum network to the Polygon network. And you can see here, I already have some Matic tokens in my wallet from previously. So now go back to the NFT page, click to add to cart. You can see it's appeared in the shopping cart. And if we go ahead and purchase this, it's only going to cost one cent. So click to complete the purchase. Now prompts you to um, create the NFT and it gives you a breakdown here of the gas fees. So it's fairly negligible, um, less than one cent. So let's click to confirm that and go ahead. So it's processing the transaction. And there you go. We've purchased our first NFT. Now we can click view purchase and it shows our NFT in our collection there under our OpenSea account. And if we go to MetaMask, You'll notice just here in the center, it says two new tokens found in this account. So if you click on that and just import all, it brings in all the tokens connected to our recent purchase. Now, the only downside here is you can't actually view the NFTs directly in MetaMask yet, which is why they've got these kind of representative tokens here. Um, However, this functionality will be improved in f future and it does give you the ability to buy the NFTs and if you wanted to then trade them, you know, or send them to someone else or whatever you want to do, you can still do that in OpenSea. So I have had more time to experiment further with that dedicated MetaMask portfolio dApp we explored before. And there's actually a really nice workaround here. So you can, in fact, view your NFTs directly in MetaMask by using the portfolio DAP. So if we go back onto the computer, back into the wallet, and then launch the portfolio site. So once open, this is already connected because we're connected from earlier on. And you'll see on the right hand side here, it lists uh, tokens, NFTs, and transactions. And currently, it's only showing all of my different tokens. So if I click on NFTs, there you go. It's right there. That's the um, NFT that we just bought. I'll just minimize this slightly. It's right there. And if you click on the NFT, it tells you all the information about it, 
about it. Um, yeah, so, you know, that's a really nice way of uh, managing your NFTs or any other assets you own, even beyond just your tokens. And my guess is that Consensus and MetaMask are only going to build out the features and functionality of that portfolio a great deal going into the future. So moving on to the next feature in the MetaMask ecosystem, we have gaming and the metaverse. So I found this helpful website listing different games that are actually compatible with MetaMask because some games do use other types of wallets. And if you look in this column, it tells you what are the supported wallets and then all the different games down the left hand side. So just for showing a brief demo, I've picked out two games and the first one is called Crypto Kitties. So to play this game, you just click start and then enter in your email address. So I'll put in my email and a nickname. Click to continue. And then now it's going to sign in and of course connect to our MetaMask wallet. So let's just sign that there, accept the prompts. And there you are, we're already into the game. I don't play this one, but if you click on this sort of start your kitten class, then it walks you through how the game works and how you breed these different um, uh, cats together. So for example, you know, you'd, let's see, what does it say? Um, okay, everyone is unique. So we need to click breed, select your kitty, <laughs> select another one, and then give them some privacy. So obviously now they're actually going to do their thing in the game. Now oh, there we are. We've got an egg. <laughs> and you know, you can just keep working your way through. And I think it said in the introduction, this is just a sort of free part. Once you start actually playing the game, the reason you need the MetaMask wallet is you actually purchase these different items in the game and then you earn rewards from, you know, achieving the different milestones and so on. Anyway, um, just to show another uh, example, uh, a more a very well-known game is called Sandbox. Some people would call, you know, this is a metaverse. So let's play Sandbox. Click to sign up. And again, we have to go through that uh, Meta, uh, MetaMask connection process. So let's connect our wallet. Click to accept the prompts again. It's going to connect. There's no cost involved at this point. Okay, I've got to choose a username. And there we are again, just sign to accept so it can connect to your wallet. And there we go, we're into the game. And it's going to take us through the process to create our avatar in Sandbox. And I don't actually play this game, but I just wanted to show how MetaMask can pretty much be used for almost any game. And I'm sure, you know, you can really get into this and enjoy all exploring this world. There you are. There's the avatar. And I don't know, let's choose a random avatar. Uh, oh, Billy Bully. There you are. <laughs> so, yeah, you can play to your heart's content in here. But I'll save that for another time. And... Now, <laughs> let's move on to the next section. So on a more positive note, the last feature I wanted to share, which I actually think is perhaps one of the most important things of all the features I've shown on MetaMask, and that is customer support. It's an often overlooked thing. Well, the reason I say this is I actually had a recent problem on a DeFi platform which is quite complex to explain, but I almost lost some funds during a conversion process. So if you go onto the MetaMask wallet, you'll see here down at the bottom, it says contact MetaMask support. And let's just open this in a new tab. So this is the support page and they have a whole wealth of information, you know, you can read and things to learn about MetaMask. But if you really get stuck, you can click here to start a conversation and it will open a live chat window. Obviously, it starts with a normal, you know, bot uh, trying to give automatic responses. But uh, if you go through all the questions and ask for a live agent, 
they will connect you to a live agent. And I have to say, with this problem I had on a DeFi platform, I was completely stuck and I could have lost quite a substantial sum. But by working with one of the customer support agents through the live chat, I mean, we were talking for 30 or 40 minutes and we were able to resolve it and recover all of the funds. So to me, that is a killer, you know, application that really makes a difference. And if I was going to compare to any other wallets, then for me, that would be really important, especially if you're experimenting with a lot of DeFi uh, dApps. So that's really something to think about. The next topic is regarding a bit of an uproar recently regarding user data and privacy on MetaMask. Now, they've actually recently released another blog update on this where they're trying to address a lot of people's concerns. And it says here, we recently updated the consensus privacy policy, hoping to clarify how their core products, MetaMask and Infura, interact from a data collection perspective when the Infura service is utilized as an RPC provider in MetaMask. Now, to clarify, I found a really good definition of RPC for people who don't know what it is. Here on Cura, Quora, this uh, guy explains that RPC stands for Remote Procedure Call, and this is a group of protocols and interfaces that let the client talk to the blockchain system. And then it goes on and explains, you know, the RPC can ask for various information from the blockchain and send requests for transactions. So that puts into context what the RPC is. So now we understand that. The meat of this announcement is in these bullet points. And consensus have said that when MetaMask does a read request through that RPC, for example, for users to check their balances in MetaMask, they do not store any user wallet account address information for those read requests. However, when you do a write request, which is what happens when you actually go ahead and do a transaction, then they do collect that data of your wallet address and they do it, they say here, to ensure successful, that the transaction is successful, basically. Um, However, even though they do store some data, they go on to say that they don't store the IP addresses from your internet connection and your wallet address data together. So those two pieces of data can't be associated, which lowers the risk. And second of all, they're working now on lowering the amount of time that they store that data to a maximum of only seven days. So they're really only holding that data for as long as it is necessary just to complete the transactions. And then last of all, they also say, we have never and will never sell any user data that they collect. And they adhere to uh, data protection and uh, user data use limitations as they describe in their privacy policy. So, I mean... Take that as you will, but in my personal opinion, it sounds like they have definitely taken on users' concerns and they are doing everything they can to address, you know, these concerns over the way they're handling the data. And from what they've announced, assuming that it is true, you can't see any re reason why not, but assuming it is, it seems all right to me. But that's just my opinion. Love to hear what you think in the comments. Please let me know. Or if you know anything further, then love to hear it. So the final topic in the MetaMask ecosystem is the future updates, including the recently announced integration with PayPal. And if we go to the consensus blog uh, article page, you can see down here in December 22, they recently announced this PayPal integration. And it says... U.S. MetaMask users will be able to purchase crypto from within the app using PayPal. Um, so I think what this means is when you go 
and log into your MetaMask wallet. And if you want to use that earlier method of buying crypto directly, when you click on pay, I imagine PayPal would just be another option in here. And well, hopefully they might have slightly lower fees than some of the other choices. But um, this update has only been rolled out to some beta testers. So it'd be exciting to see if they further improve the functionality. And on the note of security, I should also say that nothing is perfect and any hot wallet is never going to be as secure as a cold storage wallet. And, you know, if you want the ultimate solution, then really you should have something like a, a ledger device or a Trezor or whatever's your preference. Personally, I really like ledger. And if you'd like to see more about how to set that up, hit that subscribe button and I'll be doing a future video on this. Um, I'm doing a comparison as well to the old ledger and the new ledger stacks, which is coming soon. So definitely look out for that one and, you know, make your own decision on whether you're comfortable with just using a hot wallet or a combination of both cold and hot wallet storage. So that wraps up my four part series on MetaMask. And I hope you found this super useful so that it gives you the confidence to go out and explore the whole of the crypto ecosystem. If you'd like to learn more on personal investment, crypto and the road to financial independence and freedom, then hit that subscribe button and notification bell down there. Also, Drop me a comment and a like to help trigger that algorithm and help suggest this video out to more people. Um, and also, if you'd like to see anything in the next coming videos this year, love to hear your suggestions and feedback. Otherwise, I hope you had a good Christmas and I wish you the best for the new year. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Like I'm on my tiptoes, baby You think a little too small I got big goals, baby Ain't where the money at Look, I just need the info Pronto, I go and get it And split it with my kinfolk daily And I'm the type of you That might change my number on you Yeah, that's how you react When people took the slumber on you Pretty brown skin, baby I can see the summer on you You see all the bread And I know it make you wonder Don't you, don't you, don't you Ooh, I ain't surprised at all Seen them rise and fall